All right, I'm redoing this, and here's the gist of why this is so confusing in this class, is because we have an awful fucking professor. So here's the rotor, which is the part that moves, and the stator, which is the part that stays still. So any fluid velocity components that are blade relative are gonna be to the rotor, because a rotor is the, the thing that's moving, so the blades are gonna experience their own frame of reference for the the air that's the fluid that's moving in towards him. So the W component is going to be what the blade is experiencing. So as the blade's cutting in this direction, the from its perspective, the air that it's cutting through is moving in this direction. So the W is always going to be pointing from the tail of the axial flow. So you, you have flow that's always going to be moving through the stage, and the stage. Each, each of those is going to be equal between each stage. We assume those are, that's constant. So the fluid velocity with respect to the blade is always going to be from the tail of that component to the tail, or the tail of the Z component to the tail of the U vector. And why this is confusing in the example he used in class is he does not say, and you only get to know this from reading in the book, that this C vector here only exists because this is part of a repeated stage. This C vector is the same thing as this C vector on this side because it's assuming there's another combination of these together like this. And he doesn't say that in his notes. He doesn't say that in class. He expects you to figure that out on your own. But when you move to, to different parts, which I'm going to go through each of these combinations here, this C vector is going to be zero because there's nothing guiding it in any direction. It's going to be what... It's going to be the, the, the same as CZ here. Real quick, just some summary. The rotor determines W, which is the velocity of the fluid with respect to the blade. The stator determines the C vector, which is the fluid velocity in the aircraft fixed frame. Just remember that the stator is fixed, it stays still. So that is the example, or that, that is the reference frame that C is always going to be pertaining to. So the rotor will determine the C vector. Use the, the rotor velocity in CZ is the axial flow, and it's going to be constant through all these, so I have a constant in between 1, 2, and 3. And for this example he used in class, he does not tell you that there's another stage here that's going to be guiding this C vector. But what we're going to do is, because this is the angle at which the, the blade cuts into the air, this is our beta, and this is the, the angle at which W is going to be pointing from the tail of the CZ vector to the tail of the U vector. So here is the repeated stage. This is the C1 vector that's coming down from the either the inlet guide vanes or the, the stator from the previous stage is causing the C1 angle. And then W1 plus C1 is going to equal U. And additionally, W2 and C2 are going to equal U. All right, so for stage two, this, I probably didn't draw this very well, but this angle is coming out less sharp than this angle that it's cutting into. And so W2, which is, remember W is related to the rotor, is gonna be a little less shallow. Whereas if we look at the incoming, it's actually even more sharp than this. If you look at how the air is flowing into the rotor, like it hits the rotor and it goes down by this angle here. Or, I'm sorry, the stator. The stator is staying still. So this, the still stator is the aircraft fixed velocity and it's gonna be at that angle. So here, this is gonna be the same U size as this U. This, these angles are just telling you how much of this component of this vector and this component of this vector are gonna make up that same size U and that's gonna move into the next part. And since we're assuming there's nothing after this stage, this just shows that there's a, there's going to be no uh, W component here. It's just you're going to have aircraft fixed velocity. The air is coming out at this angle, but there's still an axial component going this direction. So we don't need this anymore. We're going to work with these two to move on to figuring out if this compressor is viable or not. Time to bring these together. So here is the magnitude of my u vector and I have these dotted lines here to show the magnitude and for the sake of simplicity I've put the magnitude of the cz vector here and you'll see why in a minute. Don't worry about the position of the cz vector on here this is just showing the the magnitude of it. 
like I said, I should have mentioned earlier, uh, your C vector, alpha is the angle between the axial flow velocity CZ and your C vector, which is the uh, aircraft relative velocity. This side, this component of it is your C theta, and that's going to be important for what we're about to do. So for our first state in this stage here, our C1 vector points down at a smaller angle than the W1 vector points up. U vector here, here's that same smaller angle, bigger angle. You don't need to know the exact values for this, by the way. This is just geometrically, this is being transposed here. And I've moved the CC vector down for simplicity. You'll see why in a minute. And we can see that our C theta1 vector is this height and it points down. For part two here, for, for state two, we can superimpose this the same way, but as you can tell, this is gonna be shifted, this tip is shifted up compared to where this shift is on the same U vector. So when we move that over here, we can see that C2 and W2 are here. By the way, these Ws don't really play a part in our calculations, they were just uh, added there for completion to show the geometry. And we have our C theta2 angle, which is again, this component of C2 and is going, in this case, in the direction of U, and that's important for what we're about to get to. And so the, the change in C theta from here to here is the difference between these two. Now, the specific work uh, done on a fluid by the compressor stage is the velocity of the rotor times the, the change in C theta c theta that we we're looking for earlier so when we look at u here the change in c theta this is smaller than u so we're not reaching the full potential of what uh, euler's law tells us we need to get to to have the the maximum amount of the work that we impart to the rotor to be put onto the um, the fluid in this next one here there's actually too much being done so delta c theta there's now going to be losses to like turbulence and um, heat acting on the air or on the fluid because there's too big of a difference in the tangential component of the the C velocity but this one's just right so delta C theta is going to equal U and that's going to give you the ideal amount of work done on the fluid by the compressor stage so when we look at what we did up here when we moved this, slid it over, and put it on there, and this, and slid it over, put it on there, the difference between this C theta and this C theta is this, and there's all this, we're not, we're not operating ideally, but it's still functioning, and so now we're going to work on these, so that, that's the concept, is we're looking for this value here to tell us if our compressor is... Uh, functional or not. Just went through so much of this and screwed it up. So I'm going to go through just these. They're all done, but I'm going to show that there's no uh, there's no rotor here. So this the velocity going into the stator is just going to be the same. So we ignore this part of the stage. For this part, the stator velocity is coming up at this angle. So you have this alpha for the C2 vector, but because this blade is the entrance is parallel as it's, even though it's moving up from its perspective, the air is directly in, its, in this direction to it. There's no beta. So W2 is the same here. But then this rotor is pushing in this direction, and, but the, the angle for beta is here. So there's no stator on this side. So C3 is level with the axial direction, but W3, is pointing down and we superimpose these triangles here what we see is i forgot to mention that delta c theta is the c theta exit minus c theta inlet and that just means that you can be dealing with one or two or two or three uh it just depends on which of these where the c and w are different here it's going to be equal um but it's the la it's the latter subtracting the former wherever it is and so in this case c3 is zero so the c2 vector although it's pointing in the same direction as the rotor velocity 
C3 is zero minus that, your delta C theta is gonna be in the opposite direction of the rotor velocity. This tells us that although we have the right amount of work, an ideal amount of work being done, that work is being done on the rotor instead of the rotor imparting that work onto the fluid. This is actually a turbine, and we're gonna get into that in the next section is the stator is pushing this fluid that's gonna be coming real fast and it's gonna push up on the bottom. It's gonna push that rotor in that direction. So the work is being done on the rotor. This is the opposite of a compressor. Although it's ideal, this is an ideal turbine. It's not an ideal compressor. Moving on to the next one. In this case, you have your rotor moving. There's no stator causing any change in the aircraft relative velocity. So C1 is flat and level, but W1 is going to go to the tail. And so in this case, we're actually going to ignore what the direction is here with the, the blade itself. We're going to look at the fact that C1 is level and W1 has to point in the opposite direction of uh, the rotation of the, the rotor. Then on this side of the rotor, however, it is coming up at a sharp angle. But when we look over at the stator, the stator is pointing down at this sharp angle and it's coming out flat so we'll ignore this part we're we're concerned with these two here and i have not i have not seen a case where you work with the opposite like that it's just either this these two or these two but since the the w part here from the rotor is pointing up w2 has to point up however this alpha for the stator is also pointing up but it's at a sharper angle than this and in the actual um, homework it's, it's a little more obvious for, I'm sorry, for this one. It's a little more obvious that one side sharper than the other. And so you're gonna have C2 and W2 pointing up and away from the CZ vector. And this is how we get this shape in the end, where yes, it's pointing in the same direction, but there's too much work being done on the fluid. So this is, this is a compressor, but it's operating above its uh, ideal level and it's causing a lot of losses into the fluid through heat and turbulence. Lastly, this looks similar to this, but it's just different in a couple ways. One is there's no initial stage changing uh, the C1 vector. There's no stator here. And this air flows into the rotor. This, this is cutting into the air properly and it's pushing it out at straight and level. So our W1 is gonna have a beta, but there's no uh, C theta uh, component here. And then here W2 is flat, but then there's this uh, alpha here for the C2 component. And then we're ignore C3 because it comes out flat anyway. So superimposing that over here, we have our C1 is going directly here to the tip, and there's no C theta. But then this C2, I forgot to mark it here, there is a delta C theta. And so 2 minus 0, or C2 c theta 2 minus c theta 1 means you have a vector minus a zero and so that's going to be in the same direction so this is an ideal amount of work being done on the fluid this is an ideal compressor